Well, I suppose if you're desperate, you'll try absolutely anything, won't you? If you'd like a TVAM fact sheet talking about trying everything on how to stop smoking, containing a county-by-county -county guide to what to help is available in your area, plus a unique team snapper, then write to How to Stop Smoking, TVAM, Camden Lock, London, NW1, 8TQ. I suppose it's environmentally unfriendly to smoke, particularly for the people around you. Julia Hales, good morning again. Good morning. You were saying, actually, that the worst thing about some smokers is that they cause an amazing amount of litter. Yes, I mean, each packet of cigarettes has a massive amount of litter, and if you go down the street, that's one of the main things that you'll see, with each stub and then the cellophane and the tinfoil inside and the packet. Mm. Things are remarkably overpackaged when you look at them from a green point of view. We're in the kitchen this morning because uh, Julie's going to give us a, a sort of step-by-step -step hint on how to become a green consumer. And in front of us are all the things that you might expect to see in most people's kitchens, but most of these things are environmentally friendly. Or, or ozone friendly or something like that. Can you give us a, a, a quick run through what we should be changing to, if we possibly can? Yes, OK. Well, I mean, for a start, we've got an amazing array here of organic produce, ranging from, here I see, we've noticed we've got organic soya milk, yes. which I thought was quite interesting. Organic crisps. Mm -hmm. um, nice. Not only organic, but they also give a certain amount to sage the hedgehogs every time uh, you buy a packet. Yeah. So, well, actually, I think you have to send back a, a label. And when we, when we say they're organic, they're grown, the potatoes themselves are grown without any pesticides or anything like that. Um, and in, in this case, they say they leave the peel on, so you get the benefit of the extra fibre. And there are, no, of course, no harmful additives or anything. That's like quite that. good, but then you've got the packaging as well, and it looks, that's quite dull in that particular one. How easy is it to buy organically grown vegetables and things? Well, increasingly, it's becoming very easy because most of the major supermarkets are now stocking organic vegetables. Um, I noticed that Marks and Spencer have just announced that they're doing so as well. Oh, really? Which is quite a move because they stood out for quite a long time. But they've now said, they're, you know, because they're going for quality, that they want to have organic produce. Cause it you, is. You've written the Green Consumer Guide. You're going to write a new guide on where to, where to yes. shop? Yes, well, we're actually going to write one called the Green Consumer Supermarket Shopping Guide. So it's really focusing on the supermarkets and giving you a lot more detail about what's, um, what you're going to find there and what you should be going for. And that should influence supermarkets and the major chains to actually include environmentally friendly products. Oh, certainly, because we've not only we've surveyed the, all the, the supermarkets and, and got them to send us information about what they're doing, but we've also sent a very large questionnaire out to about 300 manufacturers who supply the supermarkets to get some information from them too. Yeah. Now, look, yeah. if, if you get right down to basics, you're doing your washing up, mm -hmm. you can buy um, biodegradable washing up liquid. What is the harm that washing up liquid does do? Well, I think the important thing to note there, I mean, it says 100% biodegradable. In fact, all washing up liquids are biodegradable. It's really the time scale, and, and this one claims to be to break down quicker um, in the environment than the normal washing up liquids. Uh, and that's important, because obviously if it's, if it's breaking down quicker, it's less harmful for um, a longer, a shorter amount of time. And, and this particular brand, which is, is not British, is it? No, but it's in, imported in, into um, the UK from on the continent, and in fact it's quite widely available here now. Right, they do everything from washing powder right through to wool wash and things like that. So I suppose uh, the, the, the increasing popularity of something like this will cause other manufacturers to follow suit. Right? Yes, I mean, I think that a lot of manufacturers um, of detergents will be looking um, at the example of, of Ecova and, and noticing that they're beginning to be uh, to get quite a higher profile on being more environment friendly. And it's quite a nice, easy thing for people to, to pick out. So um, I think a lot of people will be going for phosphate-free detergents, whether it's an important environmental issue or not. Disposable nappies, what has been wrong with them up till now? Well, I think disposable nappies as a concept is not particularly good because uh, it's, it's very wasteful. But um, there's a t fantastic amount of inconvenience if you're not going to use them. You're probably aware of it. <laughs> right, yes. Um, and in fact, these nappies um, are, are sort of claimed to be more environment friendly. And the reason is because they're using a different sort of a bleaching process, which firstly means that they apparently contain less dioxins, which is an extremely toxic chemical which has been found very small um, residues in, in some nappies which have been using the bleaching process. But it also, which I think is, is, is even more interesting, is that it um, apparently uses less trees as well. Um, to, to for this new new yeah, I mean those particular technology. nappies there all mums will notice are podus but uh, Pampers have also been in touch with us saying they mm. do environmentally friendly nappies yes that's right and that's obviously going to extend right through mm. the range in the end there's uh, two rolls of loo paper on top of there what can you do as far as loo paper is concerned to make it ecological it's it's quite a tricky issue actually because you've got the the, the bleaching issue as well as um, recycled paper and uh, I think I'd plump for going for loo paper that is made of recycled paper. Um, but if you do that, you do have the problem because it will be um, bleached. So you've really got to weigh up the, 
um, the, the two problems. And in fact, the bleaching process is not just the residues that leaves in it, but it's also the fact that the process itself um, um, is quite polluting in the, in the rivers and sort of killing off the fish around the um, factories where they're made. So if you said you'd go for a loo paper that was at least, um, at least some of it was recycled well, paper, how do you find it? Most loo papers do have a certain amount of recycled pulp in it. Um, but at the moment, there is very few on the market that are actually labelled as such. But I think that's something that increasingly, because people are wanting it, they're going to label it and you're going to be able to find out which is. Because after all, it seems incredibly wasteful to be using sort of virgin pulp for, for, for new paper. For something like yeah. that, that's right. Actually, there is uh, in the Greenpeace catalogue, because you can go as far as, as contacting Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth for mm -hmm. their own catalogues, and you can get some of the products they'll, br they'll bring in from other countries and things like that. Well, actually, the, um, the, the, the one that Greenpeace sells is also one that's sold by, by Tradecraft, um, which is a fair trading company in the north, and uh, that's supplied by a, a UK company. And at the moment, they sell it to Tradecraft and also to Northern Ireland, but they haven't decided that they, um, they'll sell it over here and actually market it as recycled paper, except through charities like that. Away from the kitchen, how can you become a green consumer if you're a motorist? Well, I mean, obviously the first move is to go for unleaded petrol. But there are two reasons why uh, you should My go for unleaded. My car won't convert. It's an Austin Montego and it won't convert. Well, Austin Rover have been incredibly slow um, about that. In fact, they're, the, I think, the, the most behind in terms of having their cars available, taking unleaded petrol. It's the, the German manufacturers who've really taken the lead. And I think, as you pointed out um, earlier, the uh, Austin Rover, Sorry, that's not Austin Rover. The catalytic converters, which you can put on your car to screen out um, the, the sort of really nasty toxic emissions. The biggest manufacturer of these catalytic converters is I English, and um, most of their equipment is exported abroad. So it's not, it's not law, it's not even required, and it's not even popular at the moment to have a catalytic